musical experience, and they seem to be back, rooted in the world again, usually with ego backlash. <laughs> it's pretty sharp. Because <laughs> ego is terrified of, of that experience. And so... So the ego experiences that as well? No, but, well, but the ego reacts. That, that, the ego reacts. That's why a lot of times people will go for mystical experiences try to pierce the veil. And Jesus is saying, well, we need to really question all the underpinnings of the veil. In a sense, you may have, you may seem to pierce it, but you don't want to pierce and seem to come back to, <laughs> to the illusory world. You want to <laughs> pierce through and... But if there's something not, holding you to that world, yes. then you will come back. If you have unquestioned beliefs and assumptions, right. then you we'll will be... you there.
and, uh, and rise, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And he says, some will find it in this course today, at this, in this lesson. <laughs> That's a lot different than, it seems different than the point of death. You mean, right. here we are right now, today, you know, it's like, and, and, no. and when you can read, you know, in the workbook, yeah. he's saying, perhaps today, I mean, he's not seeing this as this enormous project, you know, he, he, he went through the words, he's like saying, perhaps today, you know, you can choose it today, it's that close. But this is something everyone ultimately has to choose. If we don't do it today, then we have to do it in order to join the mind. It seems that way. Again, it's like, to me, it comes down to even, it, it can seem like, well, either we do it today or we do it in the future. And then you read one of the sections in the text on the immediacy of salvation, and he'll throw, throw you a line like, be not content with future happiness. You know, it, it isn't your just reward. And again, it's like you're just focusing the desiring it. That's the only thing that really can can bring the awareness of the holy instant or the atonement. It's just your desire. Not you don't have to go to X amount of seminars, read X amount of good books, do X amount of good deeds. You know, some of the things that people have thought how you get your way back to heaven. If we have our ring diagram, you know. There's nothing in the outer ring that will bring atonement. There's nothing in the, the second ring. There's nothing in the, the thought ring. There's nothing in the belief ring. The bullseye. <laughs> you got the, it's the bullseye. Bullseye, again, is desire. I mean, that's the thing that, that, that brings atonement into awareness. And as I was saying, David, that we're already there. It's like we seem to be talking about some place that we have to go to or some place we can cross. So we're already there. It's the waking up, lifting the veil, or just removing your hands from your eyes and symbolism. We're already there. So really the death is, your life is, is experience of that. And death is not experience of that. It has nothing to do with the body. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Here, right. okay. Every time we put the veil back, uh, dead, it's dead, mm -hmm. alive. So, and, and yeah, and I think you have, have moments of that, and the ideal is, the idea is further, moments further and further. The true life would be right. consistent, not yeah. up and down, exactly. what, right? Well, again, what we're, we're doing talking, is yeah. we're, it's like we're trying to come to a, an understanding here and go, I got it, okay, I got it now. <laughs> and I'll tell you. You know, you can, you can even use metaphors of vacillating and this and that, but what we want to really do now is, is, yeah. look, is, is right. look at the belief. You know, it, it can be real tempting to say, uh, I got it, I followed you. Great, now I have an intellectual understanding of it. Who has an intellectual mm -hmm. understanding? You know, and have I done anything? You see? Mm -hmm. So that's why when we come at this, it's like that's why it's important if you have any kind of thought patterns. Maybe you have um, preference patterns in, a, in seemingly a particular area in your life, and you want to you want to look at those and, and, and you want to loosen. I mean, you can see again that it's just words as long as I have preferences. Preferences. It's back to no, those aren't a swirl of feathers. There's some feathers up here. <laughs> They're not swirling like this in no particular order. Just you know, random, there, there's the high feathers, the medium <laughs> feathers, and the low feathers. And as long as there's categories, then do I have the experience of the atonement? No. So that's what we, we want to be practical. And that's the a new metaphor, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this one before. And the opportunity <laughs> The here. high feather, <laughs> the medium feather, and the low feather. The I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> no. <laughs>
what if that if I'm not experiencing that, then why not? That's what, what I had to do. You know, why not? If I'm not experiencing it right this minute now, what's on my mind? Why not? You know? And so some of the things that we've discussed is, um, and a lot of these are loosening. I mean, I come up with things and they're loosening, but they're there is the idea that think of my children as a projection of my mind. Well, I don't know about that one. There's some high feathers. Okay. <laughs> to let go of time, um, you know, I mean, I being here is wonderful. I have no time schedule. I don't care if I go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't care if I get up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care if we talk and talk and talk or, you know, there's no time schedule, you know. You probably don't even know what like time it is. You don't even know what time it is, nor do I care. And that is joyful. That is a wonderful, peaceful feeling. It's a wonderful, peaceful fe I remember just sitting here, just, just for a moment while we were sitting here, and it was like, this joy just came over me. <laughs> I didn't even know what we were doing. It was just like, how was that? What you know? was that? You know, you know. So that's, I think, what, what is helpful for me to think. Well, what is it n now? And I journal, but what is it right now that's preventing me from not having that peace right now? And those are the things to examine, you know. And when you said here, yes, I have this at the time, but there's even an implication like, but I'm going to go back to something. But. Perhaps. Then that's the but we want but, to. Right, take away the piece. Yeah, we just right. want to take a look at it. It's what, not right. good, not bad. Right, exactly. But there we are. There's something there that I think like, I'm happy, I'm joyful now. And then even the thought that crosses like, mm -hmm. and there's something I have to take care of. Or mm -hmm. And that was the thing that pulled me out of that state of being with with God, I mean, seriously, it was, and I said, I could actually see the sun across the screen, and it said, don't forget to pick up Jessica. I mean, that was it. Like, I was so, I was going so far with it. I thought, I was going to forget everything here. Mm -hmm. Yay! There you go. <laughs> there, yeah. And I said, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, and that, you know, that must be one of my high feathers, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that was the, the, the fear came, and when it was fear. Mm -hmm. What if I forgot to pick up my kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Or what if I wasn't didn't come back to pick up my kids. <laughs> That's the thing that we could look at a mm -hmm. bit would be relationships. Mm -hmm. I think the, there's, there's special relationships and holy relationships. And Mary was starting to, as we were on a walk today, was starting to say that there might be some questions evolving about the whole, what is holy relationship? What, what does it involve? And, mm -hmm. and is there any kind of leaving behind something for the holy relationship, or is there any kind of uh, abdication, abdication of responsibility? responsibility? Oh, oh there's a magic word. There's a word. <laughs> well, that's, you know, I mean, that yeah. was the thing, Dave, that, that yeah. came up today. What do you, I mean, it was very helpful. What Do you feel like you're abdicating something to have that peace? What? Citizenship? I went, ah, that, no, no big deal. I can care less about voting. I know nothing about politics. It's a good time not to get involved. You know, that's not a charge. Okay, you don't advocate that. Now let's look at the And that's what this looking is about. Just, okay, let's look. Then what's the next? Do you, are you abdicating your responsibility to your family? Well, uh, way, yeah. We've had this issue about college education. I'm not working. Steve would like my help with the kids. I have three kids going to go to college. One next year. I'm not working. You know, eh, a little bit there. We need to look at that, you know. And, um. And I'm still looking at that. It's loosening. I mean, that is just not even, I'm not even feeling like I need to analyze this whole thing to the hilt. I mean, it's just it's loosening. But why not that piece now? You know, for me, that was just sort of been my lesson today all day. It's the responsibilities in the sense that it seems in this world, once the mind is identified as a person, that there are roles, duties, responsibilities tied in with with responsibility tied in with those roles. You know, if you seem to have taken on the role of parent, there are seemingly responsibilities that go with that. If you seem to have a, an employee-employer relationship, whether you're the employee or the employer, there seems to be responsibilities with that. I mentioned citizenship. You know, there are, it, it can be different forms. I mean, we, we tried to take it even to the